Good morning. Welcome to Ever Christian Church. We're going to have a good time today. I hope y'all, nobody got blown away. There was a, a lot of flooding and uh, one of the graveyards, we had to go around it yesterday because a tree had fallen down in the way in Washington. But other than that, I think we've done okay here, but there's a lot, a lot of places, Florida and all places, there's a lot of people that are having a lot of pain right now, a lot of loss. Let's remember them in prayer. And remember, uh, there are times when it comes here first, and we know what it's all about. So let's make sure we pray and thank God that uh, He's got the answer to all this. All right, we're going to have a good time today. Get ready to worship God and let her in. Let her in.
uh, put in your hand. If you've already put it in the little man out front, the little, the little brass holder right there, just hold your hand up. We're going to ask God for a special blessing this morning. If you don't have anything, put that hand up and say, God, I need you to fill this hand so I can fill your house. Red that. I need you to fill my hand, F-I-L-L, -L, in order that I can fill your house, F-I-L-L. -L. Amen. Let go. Ready? I lift up my offering to you that it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. All of these my hand that will never leave my life. You will multiply. Except my seed. Oh Lord. Get a little that hand clap. Go ahead, brother. Praise the Lord. Saints, we're all going to the Lord in prayer this time. First, we got a, a card here from the from Dudley Martin family. It says we Hold and grateful remembrance of your kind expression of sympathy, thoughts and prayers and kindness during this time. We're greatly appreciated and continue to pray and minister to you. There's a thank you for our, for our family. Does anyone out here have an outspoken request this morning? Like a big event? Uplifted hands, special needs, lost loved ones. Let's go to them. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity to have to be in your house.
gets communion, they'll get one to you. Just raise your hand and get one to you. God is so, so, so good all the time. How many as a kid? Let me change that. How many parents have we got here? How many times we give you a kid a gift for Christmas? You can be seated for a minute. Go ahead and be seated. How many here has ever given your kid a gift for Christmas and they play with the box? <laughs> I did too. Did you give, a gift, did you give a kid a gift for Christmas and they play with the box? But you know what? When it comes to God's grace, it's a gift. And so many times... Instead of getting inside the box and seeing what God's got for us, instead, we play with the box. Never understanding how deep and how wide and how strong God's grace is. God's grace can take you where nothing else can. And God can sustain you with His grace when nothing else can foot the bill. I want you to understand today as we do communion let's step not just play with the box but step inside the box see what God's got for you and then step outside the box and let God do something special for you let, let me read this to you for I received the Lord that which I also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said take ye this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup with his sub, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. That word unworthily does not mean that you're not good enough. It's talking about your attitude, not your actions. Your attitude, not your actions. Because I promise you, nobody in here has perfect actions. Amen? And so that's why we've got God. That's what Jesus is here for, to cover us. Uh, matter of fact, I like to call him, he's my stupid insurance. You ever do anything stupid? And say, God, I've done it again. He goes, I know, I already knew it was coming. And I've already fixed it for you, okay? But let a man examine himself and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this caused many a weak and sickly among you and many sleep. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Go ahead and open up the bread. Just <coughs> if you don't know how, just bend it down, bend the lid down, and then pull up the little plastic piece. And of course, as I'm telling you how to do it, I have to get one that was uh, defective. Ooh. Well, there goes that. Well, normally, <laughs> There we go. There we go. Get the bread. The Bible said on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Eat it. Also the same night, said this is my blood in the New Testament. Drink it as often as you do in remembrance of me. Drink it. Give the Lord a, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God is awesome. All the time. All the time. God is awesome. God is awesome. Sing that again.
good, 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 good. Amen. Pardon. <laughs> These just stop from back and over and remind me. Yesterday I was at the funeral home doing the funeral. I was praying for the family. And I didn't roll out the coffin at that time. I started backing up and I was back right into the coffin. <laughs> they said, stop. I had a right to tell me to stop at a funeral before then I realized what I was doing. Get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. God is awesome. All the time. All the time. God is awesome. And then some. Y'all say, and then some. And then some. Amen. Get your Bible. Turn to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 21. 2 Samuel 21. God is so good. 2 Samuel 21. How many years ever had to fight a battle? Twice. Three times. It just kept coming. You thought you had it done. And it kept coming. If you've done that, today is your day. Everybody smile. Tap some out on the shoulder and tell them you're glad they're in God's house. Y'all stand for the reading of the word. 21, verse 15. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about David and Goliath. The last week, D.C. done a great job. It didn't know do a great job through D.C. last week. I right, let me see if I got this place marked here. Yeah. 2 Samuel 21, verse 15. And moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. Wow! Yet again. Moreover, the Philistines had war again. Y'all say war again. With Israel. And David went down with the service with him and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. Now David started to get old, okay? And Ishabibanob, which was one of the sons of the giant, the way of the, whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass and weighed, being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But uh, Bishai, the son of Zeruah, succoured him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt no more go out with us to battle, that thou pinch not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at, at Gob, and there Sabisha the Hushabite slew Sap, which was, in, was one of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jairin, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gatite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's man. And there was yet a babbling gas. See, it just keeps coming. It never stops. And there was a man of great stature that had on his hand six fingers on every foot, six toes, four and twenty in number. And he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimeah, the brother of David, slew him. There were four that were born to the giant in Gath, fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Stretch forth your hand this way. Ask God for a special touch and anointing. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well, and you are on the throne. God, we know, God, that this day is your day, not ours. It's your day. You told us this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Help us, God, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what we do. Help us to know that you're here in a real, tangent way. And you want to lead us and guide us and anoint us and do what we have to do. I thank you, God, for all the things you've said and done in your word. I thank you, God, for all the things you've said and done in our life. I thank you, God, for all the things that you're going to do in our life currently and in the future and in the past as well. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. Uh, a young newlywed was sitting at his desk paying bills. When he had 
on the credit card bill. As he scanned through the charges, he noticed one particular charge to a department store for $250. He called for his wife to join him. When she entered the room, he asked her, how could you do this? Why on earth did you buy for $250? Well, she said, I was standing in the department store looking for a dress. Then I found myself trying it on. It was like the devil was whispering to me, gee, you look great in this dress. You should buy it. Well, the young husband answered, you should have, you know how to deal with the devil. You should have told him, get behind me, Satan. I did, retorted the wife. But then he said, it looked great from behind, too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sometimes you got to understand the battle is going on. Is Look, the biggest battleground you stepped on this morning is only four inches wide. Did you know that? The biggest battle ground you stepped on was from ear to ear. Amen? Satan loves to play with our head. Here's what I thought to read another version of that. It really, really is good. <clears throat> uh, war broke out again between the Philistines and Israel. David and his men went down to fight. David became exhausted. And Ishba Benah, a warrior descended from Rapha, where with a spear weighing nearly eight pounds, outfitted in brand new armor, announced that he was going to kill David. But the Bishah, the son of Zeruah, came to the rescue, struck the Philistine, and killed him. And David's men swore to him, no more fighting on the front lines for you. Don't snuff out the land of Israel. Later, there was another skirmish with the Philistines and God. This time, Shabakai, the Heshuai, killed Saf, another of the warriors descended from Rapha. And in another battle with the Philistines and God, Elhanan, the son of Jar, Jar, the weaver of Bethlehem, killed Goliath, the guy whose spear was as big as a flagpole. So another fight broke out in Gath. There was a giant there with six fingers on his hands and six toes on his feet, 24 fingers and toes. He was another of those defending from Rapha. He insulted Israel and Jonathan, the son of Shimeah, David's brother, and killed him. There were four descended from Rapha and Gath, or Goliath, of course, <clears throat> and they were all killed by David and his soldiers. And then we'll talk about, and it's going to be, this is a two-parter, and the reason it's going to be a two-parter is, I'm going to take you someplace I hope that maybe will give you some answers to some questions that you've been asking for for a long time. Asking for a long time and some answers are coming. Look at somebody and say some answers are coming. Amen. About spiritual warfare. Now, now David has already fought Goliath. We've been talking about it and talking about it. And now we see toward the end of his life, he's still fighting Goliath. Amen? He thought he was one and done. Take him down. But he wasn't. Because his descendants kept fighting. So now let me just let me just go over this a little bit and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you. Just want to talk to you today. Giants, of course, and this is all, I didn't give you size from the last time. The giants, anything that intimidates with its size, threatens with its power, seeks to take away, and stands between you and victory. So now, now here's David. David is near the end of his ministry. Some of us in here, like it or not, we're zeroing in. <laughs> Um, getting close to the other side. Amen. I, I might not be going over today, but I can sure smell the I can sure smell the sea. Amen. I'm 62. But you know what? It's been a good run. And it's gonna have a lot more run. I'm not here saying I'm dying today, but I'm here to tell you all of us need to think about it. There's gonna come a time when you start nearing the end and you better get ready. So now it's a little sidetrack. David fought Goliath at the beginning. And when he fought Goliath in the beginning, he discovered what one man and God can do. It's amazing what one man and God, one woman and God can do. But also, after he fought Goliath, he discovered that God desired to do something deeper. That Goliath was also was an awesome battle. He showed his strength in God. God showed up and showed off in a very powerful way. But God said, David, I'm not through with you yet there's more to come. I want to go even deeper. Somebody say go deeper. Yeah. 
deeper. I want to go deeper. So look, the deeper work, look, get ready. Here you go. I'm talking to you right now. Y'all just said get deeper. The deeper work will bring uncomfortable times. Woo! <laughs> Anybody had the uncomfortable times lately? It'll bring uncomfortable times. It'll bring different kind of hurts and pains. And usually it's going to be in the midnight hour. So now, here's David. There's, there's Goliath. There's Goliath's four brothers or children, descendants. Let's just say descendants. Yet he still served God faithfully for 40 years. He had his problems. Tell me somebody here that does not have problems. Tell me somebody in here that does not mess up. Tell me somebody in here that does not ever sin. Tell me that. Show it to me. And I'm going to tell you, that man's lying to you. That woman's lying to you because all of us have our weaknesses. We all have our faults. We all have our battles. He also discovered at that time, listen, the giants kept coming. He said, I thought you were going to encourage us today. I am. <laughs> I'm going to try to through the Lord's help. The giants kept coming. A lot of us, what happens is we fight our Goliaths and we think, again, we think we're one and done. We fight our Goliaths and we think, okay, we took them down. We got it now. Do you? Oh, are you going to really stop fighting? Do you think the battles are going to ease up? You see, we know that when Jesus cried, it is finished. Satan was defeated. How many know that? Amen. Y'all say it with me. We know that when Jesus cried, it is finished, Satan was defeated. Give the Lord a hand clap and praise. Satan was defeated. Lord. That doesn't mean he's going to accept it. Woo! Here's where y'all go. Woo! Although he's defeated, it doesn't mean he's going to accept it. And it doesn't mean that he's going to lay down and play dead. He still is the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air. They're, they're all leashes and they're getting ready to run out. But you need to know that Satan is still a very powerful adversary. He's not going to go down easy. Sometimes we get hit, we lay down and play dead. He doesn't. He keeps on getting up and keeps on coming back. So now, now let's just go a little bit further here. David realized that Goliath was not his only giant. Some of y'all would do a whole lot better in life if you realized your Goliath was not your only giant. If you realized that when you took down your Goliath, what you did was you challenged Satan to come at you stronger and harder than he's ever been before. See, David found out that he was responsible for four more. Now, now, these four guys, and we're not going to get into them today because we're going to do that next week. I just wanted to stop and camp here because I really believe to go past this would be an injustice to you. And I just wanted to show you something. Hopefully you might not have seen it this way. Hopefully it will change your perspective and hopefully it will give you hope the next time you are tempted. Each one describes Satan's tactics uh, in progressive spiritual warfare. So, so first off, the very first thing, and this is where we're going to camp today. We've got a few slides. We're going to camp here today. The first thing David realized when the giants kept coming, and some of y'all need to realize this, it would help your day a whole lot more if you realize this. If you could get this uh, 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 in your head, is he fought an opponent that refused to quit. Say no play fair. Do you think he's going to play fair? Well, say no fight fair. Do you think he's going to fight fair? You hear the terrorists talk about how we do things that aren't fair while the whole time they're tearing us all to pieces. They're saying we're bombing hospitals and we're not. And we're doing this and that and we're not. And they're taking their own people as human shields. But they say we're playing dirty while they blow up the World Trade Center. 
You think the World Trade Center, they'll be over with. Got Bin Laden. Do you notice we keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going? Because in terrorism, we're fighting an opponent that won't quit. Let me ask you a question. As you're being fought, how easy is it for you to lay down and just quit? Ouch. How easy is it for you just to say, okay, enough's enough. I'm through with it. I just quit, God. You can have it, God. I'm not even going to serve you anymore because these guys keep, the devil keeps coming. And you don't even realize you're playing right into Goliath's hands. Now, now watch this. Here's some life lessons David learned, but I've learned this in my own life. I want you to watch this. Watch this carefully. Life lessons in spiritual warfare. Number one, as long as you live, as long as there's life in you, there's going to be a fight for you. As long as you have life in you, there's going to be a fight for you. Now, I was watching Private Ryan. How many's ever seen Saving Private Ryan? Awesome, awesome movie. And there was a messenger. As the messenger was trying to go from their detachment and tell another attack detachment that to give the message of what's going on, when the Germans saw them, they started shooting him. And he was trying to crawl back and they kept shooting him and shooting him and shooting him. And one of the guys looked at the captain and said, that is just terrible. They won't stop shooting him. Why do they do that? And the captain says, we do the same thing. He said, what are you talking about? He says, as long as there's breath in the messenger, they've got the message. So they take the breath out of him. So he can no longer bring the message. As long as you are alive, you've got the opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. You have the opportunity to help somebody avoid hell. You have the opportunity to really help someone to make a difference in somebody's life. So as long as there's life in you, Satan is going to fight you. It will never stop. Don't think you won't. He comes at us in all kinds of angles. So look, Satan is not going to quit. So, 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 so again, we are God's representatives on earth. We're the ones that talk to our co-workers. We're the ones that talk to our family. We're the ones that, that, that live the life before people. So don't you know he wants to take you out because he cannot stand what you're doing. David weren't the, that David weren't the first one. I'm going to read something to you. I'm read several versions of it to you. And then we're going to camp here and then we're going to close. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, the 40 days and 40 nights, and the three great temptations at the end, the Bible says in Luke 4, 4 13, that Satan departed him for a season. Let's take it deeper. The message says... That he completed the testing, the devil retreated temporarily, lying in wait for another opportunity. Look at the Amplified. And when the devil had ended ever in the complete cycle of temptation, he temporarily left him. That is, he stood off from him until another more opportune and favorable time. You need to know something. Even when things are going great, and I hope your things are going great right now. Peter said, why are y'all so amazed at these, man of these, these manifold tribes? They're coming to test you. It's like something strange has happened to you. It's happening all over the world to all the other Christians. Satan and his cohorts watch you. And they wait. And at a more opportune time, they're ready to catch you. I can't. 
cast that demon out right there. See that? See, the more opportune time, and I'm going, pow, he's gone. See? Satan watches you, and he knows when he can hit you and it's going to stick. I'm going to give you something now. Maybe you've never seen this. Maybe you have. I don't know if you have it. Praise God if you have. Praise God. But I want you to get this in your spirit today. A little acronym. HALT. Means stop. When you find this in your life, these are the times that Satan comes against you. These are the times. I'm going to do a whole sermon on this. But today I just want to do one little stop and shop here. Halt. Watch out. Stop. These are convenient seasons. You know, we all talk about it. It comes after victory. It comes uh, when you're alone. It comes when you're sick. Yeah, we know that. But but let's take it deeper. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Let's take it even deeper. Halt. You say, what in the world are you even talking about? I'm going to show you scripture and show you this, and hopefully it'll magnify your consciousness about this. All of you must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious, and be active. Watch and pray, this is in the garden, that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. How many of you ever read that scripture? How many of you ever quoted it? We get ready. We get ready to hit it hard now. Halt. Satan comes at you. The acronym is hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. That's the convenient season. When you find yourself in this convenient season, then for Satan, this is the convenient season. Hungry. When you, when you get here, hungry, you become irritable and you're unable to focus and, and you begin to get weak. And the Bible says that Jesus, after he had been 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness without eating, and he was hungry. And Satan used the last three big temptations. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was lonely. Jesus was tired. And he got hit hard. But he survived it. He knew what to do. He used the word. Angry. I didn't write it down. He just got it written right across there. Angry. You know, anger itself is a... Is a uh, Neither bad nor good emotion. It's an emotion that God gives us. You hang on whether it's bad or good. But the Bible does say it can be bad when you get angry and you let your anger drive you to do things that you know you shouldn't do. Be angry and sin not. Do not open the door for Satan. So one of the convenient seasons Satan uses to get at you is when you're angry. Hungry. Angry. Lonely. We're social creatures. God said it's not good that man should be alone. Even the loners have to have somebody to talk to because we get highly stressed and depressed and we get anxious when we isolate. And loneliness is the breeding ground for Satan is to wear you out. Elijah, after, after he slew all the prophets, after he had seen the cloud the size of a man's hand, after he had the gully washer, after he had run 20, outrun God, uh, uh, King's chariot and horses 20 miles, what was he? He was tired. He was lonely. He was hungry. And when Jezebel threatened him, he was angry. Wow. something so watch out for the convenient season because when the convenient season comes if you don't know this stuff it's going to take you and take you down and take you down fast tired when we get tired when fatigue makes us grumpy 
Does he make us sleepy so we're not even paying attention? There were a couple weeks ago, I'd done the entire PowerPoint, and I was sleepy, and I went to do something or whatever, they hit the wrong button. I couldn't even bring it back. It was all gone. I had to start over again. Because when I was tired, I was sleepy. Instead of hitting save, <laughs> you know, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Y'all say it with me. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. When you find yourself in one of these positions, get ready. Because that is Satan's more opportune season. This is where the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Somebody said, well, Sam, one more, more, two more slides, and then we're going out of here. We're going to stop right here today. Goliath. Of course, Goliath means beheader. That's the first one. The beheader. Goliath seeks to destroy or distort your thinking. And the Bible says that God will give you the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of sound mind. One of the meanings of sound mind in Greek literally means to think under pressure. You're going to be made a swap, you'll think under pressure. Because they'll come and tell you something as you're walking to the next meeting. They'll come and say, this has got to be done. Or you come in and get everything set up wrong. And you come in and go, wow, we hadn't had a meeting in three years. And so here I am trying to do stuff and we hadn't even had a meeting in three years. And they traded us some stuff we didn't know about. And so I walk in. And all these people are behind me waiting for me. And I say, okay, God, it's me and you. Come on now. <laughs> Where'd you hide it? I was walking in the funeral yesterday and we had all the songs picked out. And I'm walking with the coffin behind me. Behind me. The family behind the coffin. And as we're walking up, the sound man runs up and says, Oops, we messed up. Oops, we messed up. We don't have that song. What do we do, preacher? I'm for me to Steve from walking in the front door to the chapel. <laughs> And I said, instead of going, whoa, 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 I just went, okay, Tom, my chains are gone. He goes, Tom, my chains are gone. I said, yes, Tom, my chains are gone. And he went, wow, man, that's a good one. <laughs> well, weren't as good as one I had picked, but <laughs> it worked out very well. Because you got to keep your mind in the game. And that song and the communion. That's very powerful, but that's nothing compared to when you've got your children and they're needing you. Or you got something going on with somebody. You know, DC a paramedic. I promise you, he's trained and trained and trained and trained again for all kinds of scenarios and trained and trained and trained again. So when it happens, he's cool as a cucumber and can think. Those guys, you see those guys flying those big old uh, I call them albatrosses, not albatrosses, but the big old planes that, that come in the land like this. Osprey. Osprey. Daniel one day, when he was still in the sheriff's office, he would ride sometimes with them, and he would get in there and he said, he said, you just think they're just landing, coming up and landing, practicing their landing. He says, they're not just practicing their landing. He says, when they get through at night, they spend two or three hours back at the base going over what they done that day, and they went over battle plans, and they learned so when now, when they come in a hot zone, they're ready for it. Not because they went in the not because they hadn't trained, because they trained all the time. Every day, they're learning how to, they're given different scenarios. And the biggest one of all is that, that Warhawk down on Highway 33, come right down right here like this, and was coming just like this. I called Steve, I said, Steve. He said, well, I said, there's a Warhawk. Looks like you get ready to hit me. He said, be still, bro. He said, he got you pinged. He trained him. And I said, I hope you don't have any real bombs. And I'm not kidding. When he come over me, my, my belly went, Phew. And I said, thank you, Steve. <laughs> I got to go to the bathroom now. No distorted thinking. 
Goliath wants to mess up your mind. He wants to tear you down. That's what had happened 40 days and 40 nights. Nobody would fight him and David. He took him. So watch this. I just want to tell you this. And then we're getting really close. He keeps coming and telling you that you cannot win. He keeps coming and telling you that it's over. He keeps coming and telling you there's no way you can make it. You're going down. I just want to ask you a question. My friend, this is just more than mighty army for some folks. Maybe not everybody because some people get other stuff too. This was the, on the morning part of the mighty army. You survived everything that you thought you would. Amen? Are you still here? I didn't say you thrived in everything. I said you survived everything that you thought you would. This is my, one of my favorite, favorite slides. I'm going to get rid of those. I'm get where I can see it good. I'm not afraid of an army of lions led by sheep. I'm afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. Wow. We're going to finish this up next week with all the brothers and all the spiritual warfare and how you take it out. But I couldn't stop until we talk about Satan's convenient season. Oh, you know the Word of God. You've got the Word of God down. You know how to say the Word of God. The Spirit is willing because you've got the Word in your heart, in your mind. You're ready to get with it. You say, well, I already knew the Word. Why did I fall for it? Because you were hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Elijah, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. The disciples on the boat, they were hungry, not hungry because they just fed the 5,000, but they were tired. When they got to the man that was full of demons, he was angry, he was lonely, he was tired. Everybody stand. DC, come play something, buddy. This man, this is this stuck in my soul, stuck in my spirit. I was talking to big old David Richards. That man big as a house. And I said, dude, is there anything you're afraid of? He said, name one person I'm afraid of. One. One. Said, I don't want to have to see him. David said, it's very hard to be 
need a man that won't quit. And after he said that, I said, I sure hope Satan sees me that way. Everybody bow your eye, bow your head, and close your eyes. You can bow your eyes if you want to, but it's be kind of hard. Bow your head and close your eyes. Nobody looking around. Today is a very powerful day. Satan is very upset. Because he didn't want you to hear about a halt. He wants you to hear this moment that we always say the convenient seasons after a victory, which is awesome, it's the real thing. Of course, when you're tired, or excuse me, when you're sick. And that's real too. But he really didn't want you to hear that. When you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired. That's the door. That Satan's looking to go through. That's the opportune season. The greatest example is Jesus in the wilderness. He didn't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm asking a few questions. Number one, if you're here today, Maybe it's because you took the bait. Maybe it's because you just found it hard that Satan found a convenient season in your life. But you back down. You stop fighting. And you're ready to get your fight back. You want that fight back. And I'm talking to you today. If you don't really want to be with God, although maybe it not be from the fight, maybe it's just that you've just grown cold. Whatever it is, you want to realign yourself with God. You want to get your fight back. Nobody looking around, every eye closed, would you put that hand up and say, Pastor, I really need to get my fight back. I really need to get back right with God. Maybe everything's okay with you and God. Somewhere down the line, the convenient season, the open door, and you wonder where it came from, how did it happen? Well, your spirit was willing, but your flesh was weak. You were hungry, angry, lonely, tired. One, two, three, four. And you're ready to get back up. It's okay, God. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to be just like my opponent who refuses to quit. I'm going to refuse to quit. I'm talking to you right now with all his bowed and all eyes closed. Would you raise that hand? God, give me that number. Refuse to quit. Refuse to quit spirit. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. We're going to pray together right now. Father, now pray with me. Father, we know that you're an awesome God and you're a powerful God. We also know that we fight an opponent that will not quit. Help us to not give up either. Help us not to quit. Help us, God, to be ready to fight with all our might. Help us to know, God, that when we put up our natural, you put up your super. And it becomes awesome. Help us, God, when it comes to grace, to quit playing with the box. Dig in deep. And we thank you for it. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Father, we rededicate our lives to you. And thank you, God, 
for renewing the fight inside of us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God is so good, so good, so good, so good. Steve, will you dismiss us in prayer, brother? Well, God, I'm just praying for you, man. For what you've done for us. Lord, help us to stand up.